officially start. So we're going to do a panel, and it's going to be moderated by Anastasia Uspensky, who is an IT journalist at Netokratia and Shift Mag. And you might also know her for co-hosting Netokratia's Office podcast. And she's specifically been following AI topic for a while since it's very expansion. So uh, I'm sure everyone else will introduce themselves. Anastasia, the floor is yours. Thank you, Blanka. OK, uh, my name is Anastasia Uspensky, as you heard, and I work in Etokratia. Uh, so I will be moderating this panel. Let's start from the beginning. Can you introduce yourself in one minute or so? Eugene, can you start first? Hello, everyone. Yeah, uh, my name is Evgeny, or Eugene, uh, how would you like it? Uh, I'm working at Yandex, and I'm making uh, AI for image generation. Before, I worked uh, in uh, VK in, back in Russia, and uh, before that, I did some research on image and video quality in Moscow State University. That's all. Hi, everyone. My name is Milan Dobrota. I'm a founder and CEO of Agrimo, a company that produces AI-based software for automatizing analysis of aerial collected imagery for precision agriculture. I'm uh, 22 years in the software industry, and of which 12 years as an entrepreneur. Uh, good evening. Uh, nice to be here. Uh, I'm, I'm Marko Evremović. Uh, right now, I'm a co-founder on, a, uh, on an uh, analytics uh, SAS. Before that, uh, I was uh, head of data in, uh, in, in Tudis Prados, and, and before that, I worked for uh, nine years in Nordius uh, in, in various things, but mostly as a data scientist. So I kind of connected data and, and gaming, and this is, this is something uh, I'm working on right now as well, because it's analytics in, in gaming, uh, mobile gaming space. That's for start. Thanks. OK. What is considering all of us the most is, will AI take our jobs? So my first question, I wrote down some about uh, tw uh, 10 questions. But uh, let's start with first one. Um, you, uh, Evgeny, uh, will you break the ice? Uh, my question is, uh, is there a real reason to panic about AI? And uh, it is going to take our jobs for real. <laughs> well, I'm personally saying uh, that there's no need to panic. Uh, AI is just another instrument to help increase our productivity and use our time uh, for more creative tasks and, you know, make routine for us, like, uh, do some routine tasks without our uh, manual, uh, in, uh, without us, I mean, uh, so we can uh, make more creative tasks, yeah. OK, Marco, we had a conversation before this panel. What do you think on this topic? Well, I'm, I'm kind of conservative on that, uh, on that issue and many others in, in terms of AI. Um, I don't think it's going uh, to uh, take your job, definitely, and, and many of, of these people here. There are many very, very weird jobs in the world. So uh, like 100 years ago, uh, there used to be a person who would wake up re really, really early, and then they would knock on your window to, to wake you up. So that was before uh, you had your uh, you know, uh, watch, mechanical one, to, to, with an alarm. And at one point, that job disappeared. Like No one knows now that, that it even existed. So uh, uh, unfortunately, I think there's many modern equivalents of that. And AI will certainly take over those jobs, but like, not, not in general. And you, Milan, what do you think about this topic? Yeah, I'm pretty much on the same page with Marco and Evgeny. Uh, for sure, some jobs will be replaced with AI, but actually, and if we just replace AI with technology in our conversation, 
nothing will change, you know. So the same way uh, what Mark just said, you know, uh, you, we replaced uh, showers with excavators, right? So technology is replacing uh, the repetitive, hard human labor uh, since, since, you know, tens and thousands of years. Uh, or when wheel was invented, right? So that was a technology that replaces some of the human labor. So I think the reason why we are talking now this much uh, about AI is, is it's hype, right? So we had some events that uh, pushed it, um, but uh, AI is not, like, it's not, now we are in a world with AI, and until recently we were in a world without AI or technology in general. So it's a part of a continuum, right? So technology is replacing uh, hard, repetitive human labor constantly, you know, since, since ages. So uh, it will st stay the same way for the future as well. And what do you think? Uh, which jobs are most at risk? Well, I, I cannot name probably exact roles or jobs, for, but for sure, as I already said, it will be those uh, that are repetitive in a way that, uh, that uh, until now, you had to do it manually. Uh, again, same way like accountant did manual calculation, calculated and Excel was invented. So are we now in a world without accountant? No. Uh, so we just need a fewer people to, so less people to do the calculation because Excel does it the same. So the, it, I think it will be the same. Uh, so which exactly jobs? It's hard to tell, but I think it will be up to industry, up to technology companies to invent a new way and new applications for AI to create value to, to actually, actually to increase productivity of people and hence decrease the number of uh, manual work or people that will need to do the job. Okay, what do you think, uh, Evgeny? <laughs> uh, yeah, I agree uh, pretty, uh, with Milan. Uh, there are some works that are more affected by AI and some are not. But uh, it was, uh, as Milan said, uh, as such for a lot of uh, hundreds of years, technology always replaces manual work and provides more opportunities to be more uh, creative and use your time more efficiently. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And uh, Marco? My, my um, I have a question for you. Has artific uh, artificial intelligence already found its application in your industry because you're in game industry? What, uh, what you have? Well, in, in gaming, it's been uh, since er very, very early. So uh, I, I, I got into gaming like 30 years ago on, on Commodore 64, and I used to play uh, chess. So it was an AI back then. That's, that's also an interesting thing because uh, AI is kind of always a moving target, you know, like 30 years ago, it was a chess program. And now no one actually sees anything uh, amazing in that. It's, it's like, it's still AI, it's technically AI, but uh, that's not something people think about when, when they say that two letters, you know. So, uh, like the, the history of AI is actually the history of, of what's on, on edges and in gaming it's, it's like been forever, really. Now what's happening is, let, let's, let's move to today, AAA games, the, the, the good looking ones, uh, the costs for production are huge. So there is now a lot of, uh, a lot of work being done to automatically generate, you know, the worlds, the, the, the characters, and all that. Uh, there's an amazing work here in Novi Sad by, by uh, three lateral crew. Uh, they're doing the meta-human thing, which is, which is obviously AI-powered. It's an amazing thing. So that's just one of the examples of, of what's happening. Talking about the AI uh, application in your industries, I'm very curious about uh, Alisa. Is that her name? Or Alison? Yeah, Alisa. Alisa. <laughs> Can you explain who Alisa is? <laughs> yeah, Alisa is a voice assistant by Yandex, uh, like uh, Siri or Cartana. I think uh, this can be improved uh, like by current AI advanced, because uh, previous voice assistants, including ones I mentioned, they, were, uh, they felt like robots, because you can't really talk to them. And uh, new advances like GPT and uh, the like 
uh, they can help to really talk with uh, actually a robot and maybe uh, improve you know usability of this uh, technology thank you and uh, milan um on this topic, I have a question for you. Uh, how do we balance AI-driven automation and preserving human creativity and decision-making? What do you think about this topic? How, uh, so how the AI will replace human creativity? Yeah. Well, it won't. It won't, uh, at least not to, to uh, my knowledge or, I, I guess, general understanding of uh, experts what AI is now, maybe in, in 50 years. Uh, so, uh, it, I mean, we always have to be careful what do we call AI, right? What do it is. It's not really intelligence. So it's just a, a very clear way of using large amount of data so that we can process data that we didn't teach the algorithm to process exactly that data. So that means that uh, uh, you have to teach it, you have to supply this data and uh, creativity typically assumes that you are creating something without previous experience, how, uh, how do you do it? Uh, so um, then it all comes to, to again, to, to developing the model. It's what really AI is, you know, I, I, I read it, I don't remember from who, uh, so it's like when you are pitching it to investors, it's AI, when you are hiring, it's a machine learning, and when you are implementing, it's linear regression. You know, so so we are very often we call AI uh, different things, you know, different different uh, techniques and uh, algorithms of processing the data, um, and uh, many of them are not actually creative at all. You know, they're just uh, optimized way of uh, again based on the supplied data uh, as an input to process new data. So uh, replacing the human creativity or making some decisions, uh, because again, it's easy to make decisions when you have a, like exact or good data based on which to, but sometimes you make many, many decisions on a cut feeling. And this is something that this uh, I in AI is not there yet. And uh, I, maybe it, it will get there, but it's not there yet. Uh, thank you, Milan. And Marco, what do you think about this topic? Because you, ca uh, you come from game industry and uh, it's really tight, so... Uh, oof. So, I, I, I can't connect it that much to gaming industry. Um, but um, I used GPT to uh, write a, a kind of public announcement in the form of poetry from from a couple of points different and it works amazingly well so it's it's really an amazing thing uh, I think it can even write the seterats really well it's it's kind of weird like hu humans are weird about that so uh, what's what's actually creativity and what's you know what's art and all of that so uh, people will pay a lot of money for a guitar that used to belong to Elvis but will not, but will not pay, not, not nearly enough for, for the exactly same guitar, you know. So uh, it's going to be a it, it's going to be a discovery. It's like it can help some people to express something, and maybe it can be turned into something that's interesting to other people. But but like in general, just to produce it on their own, like I think people will just ignore that as they ignore the guitar that didn't belong to Elvis. It's just how we are. <laughs> Milan, what do you think about that? About uh, creativity and... Uh... Yeah, it's pretty much uh, on the line, uh, I think, what I already said uh, on the topic. For me, again, m maybe it's just my, you know, if you would ask uh, probably an artist uh, to answer the question, you'll probably get a lot different answer uh, than me being like engineer so and always uh, trying to think uh, uh, like to make a logic and the sort of an algorithm to come to the result and if it's uh, if the result is a, a creative piece of art you know for, for me uh, uh, that, that's that's not something that uh, can be produced out of zero from uh, you know from stretch uh, as a result of, uh, of uh, not just AI, I mean, generally technology, not, not, uh, at least not yet. So, yeah, pretty much in line with what they already said. 
uh, and Yevgeny. Um, I said that uh, I later, uh, I earlier said that I don't like when someone pronounced my name Anastasia and I called you Eugene, so sorry. <laughs> Yevgeny, <laughs> I have a question for you. Uh, how can these barriers uh, be overcome to maximize uh, the benefits for business? Uh. Well, I, I, I personally don't think that the skepticism of, uh, you know, general people is really a problem for businesses to use AI. Uh, it's more of a, you know, cost problems, I think, <laughs> uh, nowadays. Uh, but uh, in general, I think people uh, think uh, more good about uh, a modern AI when they try to use it. But, they either feel more good about it or more bad about it. Because I, I had friends who were very skeptical about uh, you know, GPT. They said that it's uh, nothing. And uh, after they used it, they said, wow, that would change my life. Uh, <laughs> some said that it would change in a good way, and some say that it would be their doom. Yeah, people are strange, like uh, Marco said uh, about it. Amazingly strange. Yeah. I like to say that I'm using ChatGPT as my assistant. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a really nice uh, you know, tool for making announcements, some um, boilerplate text, and uh, a lot, it, can be, it can do a lot of things, but it re still requires uh, people to you know, generate uh, prompts for it to actually use it for something good. Uh, let's talk about ethics and moral. Uh, what would you say on this topic, uh, Marco, first? Oof, oof. Of uh, ethical usage of AI technology. Um, that's, that's, a, that's a big thing. That's really a big thing. I think uh, the main issue is, uh, is for people to agree about what's ethical, actually. You know, so uh, half the time, I, I think that, you know, half the time people just know that some, some things are wrong, you know. There is no discussion about that. Still, there is a discussion. And then about many other things, uh, I, I don't think that within one society you can, you can agree about what's ethical about anything, you know. So... Uh, to me personally, it's, it's very funny to, to have this as such a, a big topic within AI. And then I think that's uh, basically one of the rare areas where you have uh, even talks about ethics and morale, you know, like uh, what, what, other industry, uh, what other industry is talking about that? That's, that's even that's more interesting question for me for instance. So I, I think that, uh, you know, like things like uh, chat GPT, which are trained on like the internet, uh, it, there's, there's always going to be issues because uh, you, you can't make something that, that everybody likes, you know, you can't make something that everybody in this room like, especially not in the whole world. Um, okay. Uh, Thank you for the honest answer. <laughs> so, uh, Milan, talking about that, I have a question for you. Uh, how can we address data privacy and security concerns while advancing AI technologies? I think it's your topic. <laughs> One. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think um, I think that's. I mean, similarly as with ethics, you know, the, the reason why we are speaking of it in the context of AI is because okay, first this is a like the, the, the event the conference uh, around the, the topic, but in general um, uh, is because it's hyped now, obviously. Again, uh, so um, same same as with ethics, you know, you can you can discuss like where's the ethics in producing guns, right, or or fertilizers that are polluting the crops or lands, etc. So it's it's not absolutely not different than any other any other uh, technology or or or, or a piece of equipment or whatever we produce. You can uh, you can pose the, the 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 same question. So, sorry, but the question that you asked, I, I lost. I 
you, the question you asked was? Uh, was how can we address data pri uh, privacy uh, yeah, and it, security yeah, sorry, concerns? I, I yeah, sorry for diverging from the, from, from the, from the question, but, but it's very linked to me. You know, it's, it's actually uh, data privacy, again, AI will, is providing uh, a better way to, to process this data and to put it into some use, right? But data privacy and, and collecting the data, it's not a matter of AI, right? So uh, there is internet, there are databases being collected by different, by governments, by companies, by whoever. So, uh, and and, and the, uh, that's the source of, right, uh, the uh, data privacy questions. Uh, AI will just make it easier, right, to be it abused, but it's not the root of the problem. So again, we are just picking it in the context of AI because now, uh, now it's it's a hot topic, obviously, and it's of course served by media as well. Uh, but uh, but to me, uh, right, the root problem lies before before it comes to the AI context. Okay, and Marco and Evgeny, what do you think about this topic? Uh, do you have uh, any concerns about uh, it? I, I can add shortly. I, I absolutely agree. Like uh, the problem with uh, you know security and privacy, it's it's very independent from AI. It's just being worse, uh, made worse with a AI uh, development. And like frankly, I think uh, both uh, ships sailed. A long time ago. So, both on the topic of ethics and data privacy, like this is this is the world we live in. Um, and you, Evgeny? Yeah, I also agree. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, it's a really complex question, so, like because uh, internet is a really big thing. Uh, there are a lot of data stored in there, and a lot of it, uh, you know. Uh, it has public access, like any people can use it. Uh, and so how do you say that you can't uh, gather this data to train a network? Or how, con how can you say that painters can't uh, use uh, this painting to teach themselves paint? So it's a really complex question that uh, people, I'm not, I don't think people are ready to answer it. Or answer it can be dependent or which country or what people you ask. So, yeah, and uh, I, th I also agree that uh, we talk about it because it's uh, like the most hyped thing right now and uh, maybe next year it will be something another. I, I can add uh, an example, a very funny one from, from my industry. So, uh, uh, I has created uh, a huge problem uh, in the industry when they introduced uh, this uh, scan thing and you know uh, now now it's it's like opt in to actually share your data etc so it's created a bunch of, of problems in the industry and uh, the funny thing is like there's all these layers of, of obfuscation and it's all uh, for you know people's protection it's not really it's it's about you know uh, it's about their business but uh, in the end, you can still fingerprint people with, with their devices. Uh, it's just like after all the layers of obfuscation, it's like, and we forbid you to do that. Okay, so if we catch you to do that, you know, we are gonna, whatever, kick you out of the house. Um, that, that's, uh, that's the Apple's position. So, you know, even, even though that's like the most complex uh, system for for uh, you know data privacy, you can still easily do fingerprinting, and that's it. You know, so that's not going to change. That's that's why I said that that boats sail. Uh, thank you, Marco and Milan. I have uh, an extra question for you. I wrote it down because. Uh, I was preparing for this. <laughs> uh, how do you see this, uh, all of this affecting to uh, the creative industries and the intellectual property rights? Yeah, I think uh, to the level uh, where AI or technology in general will be able to uh, allow easier creation of the content, right? Or which, so uh, whether it's just increasing productivity in creating the content or completely creating it. I think as a, as a you know, the rule of uh, supply and demand, uh, the, the more content 
is created, the less value uh, will be in it, uh, the less people will pay attention to protect, like, to, to the intellectual property of this content uh, at all. I think to the point, I mean, uh, chat GPT, for instance, if you ask it to write it an article, right, so you have a, in this moment, probably competitive edge that you will be able to write 10 articles per day instead of one article per day. Uh, but once everybody starts doing that, you know, uh, then it will reverse the circle. We're going to circle back that the article written by ChatGPT will have actually not much value because then people will look for a way how to write a unique article that is not an article from ChatGPT. You know? uh, so I, I think it, it, it's the same with uh, generated text, in, generated images, for instance. Uh, a piece of art of a painter for like for a few hundred years ago. It's very expensive, it's unique, it's valuable. But if you can produce like millions of, of pictures every day in, in different combinations or whatever, I think there won't be so much value in it. Of course, nobody will pay to have the uh, same image that is the uh, same as millions of others. Uh, and then the, the IP over it will not be that much of a topic actually at all. Of course, I cannot now answer like the question uh, who owns the ownership if it's if something is generated by AI? It's probably you know not. It's more uh, for legal questions, not my not my field of expertise that much. Uh, but I think what what is important is this uh, supply and demand and the value behind it and and how actually no people will start paying attention to that. Uh, thank you very much for this explanation and uh, you. Evgeny, do you have any opinion about this? Because uh, I think it's not uh, your topic as much as uh, Milan's. So, but uh, in that perspective of uh, yeah. corporation. <laughs> yeah, I only have opinions, uh, not really <laughs> uh, you know, my subject of expertise. Well, uh, as uh, was example about scans, like. Uh, uh, does uh, a scan of a painting uh, have the same value as uh, original painting? Uh, I think in the same way people will uh, adjust to a new era of generated uh, content. <laughs> like may uh, maybe a person uh, took some time to generate something or it was just a tool to like make something he wanted. Maybe it, it's a generated image by some famous people, and it would be uh, would bring some value to another people. So I think people will figure it out uh, in some way or another. Uh, thank you, and Marco. Finally, what do you think on this topic? It's it's very interesting topic. Uh, one one thing that. Uh, that can be uh, you know, looked for there is, is uh, stuff that's missing. So for instance, you can try to generate uh, whatever is Disney related in, in those uh, like uh, mid journey or whatever. Um, you can't get, it, you know, so uh, no, no Disney images. So that's, that's interesting, right? So why, why, why not, uh, you know, Disney's characters there uh, or anything like it? So, um, I think it's going to be a, a, a huge thing, which is just starting uh, the the legal uh, the, the legal struggle between people who are creating something original and and the companies that are basically you know uh, kind of bo poaching on that. It's it, it's it's going to be strange, uh, and and it's going to be you know probably a battle that happens somewhere on on some court in America. But, you know, like, worst case is that uh, a lot of artists mm, go out of uh, work and what will happen is basically, you know, at, at one point uh, there will be not that many, you know, uh, human-produced art to train newer models. And, uh, you know, uh, if, if Internet becomes saturated with... Uh, AI generated art, that's the stuff it's, it's going to be trained on again. And, and this will, you know, in perspective lead to some probably strange results in, 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 because, you know, we are looking at this one moment in time, but what happens when you have this process roll on, you know? So uh, 
either either way like either people decide that they don't like it or there will actually be a technical issues to train newer models because they created some big gap in 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 this market so it's it's going to be interesting uh, I, I i have no idea this is like a couple of of realities that can happen okay thank you very much and um at the end, uh, which advice uh, would you give to anyone who is uh, considering about AI and uh, their uh, implementation of those technologies in their work? Uh, start from uh, you, uh, Evgeny. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Well, I think uh, AI, uh, like current technologies, are already here. They will not be uh, left behind, and the technology will. Uh, advance more and more, like maybe exponentially, and we just need to, you know, get used to it. And uh, I don't think it, it's really a matter of thinking whether it will be good or bad. We just need to find uh, good uh, applications of new technologies to our current life and the lives of other people. Yeah, that's all I think. Milan? Yeah, I think it's... Um, Pretty much similar as uh, any other business. So, so first, n n if, if you're building a product or service based on AI, right? So you want to sell it, but uh, whoever will buy it, it, they won't buy it on kilos, right? Okay, give me five kilos of AI this year, you know. So you have to solve a concrete problem uh, problem to them. Uh, so AI will probably uh, help you in solving this problem better than it was you were a or anyone was able to solve it uh, until now. Uh, but you have to focus again as in, in if you're producing software if you're producing whatever so you have to create value you have to solve a problem for someone uh, and and then they will say so even though even despite the hype right so nobody will the guy who is managing uh, whatever is the department uh, in the business that you're trying to sell to they won't say yeah you know now it's a hype of ai so, so take my 100,000 euros i want to buy some ai so that won't happen like that that maybe Maybe they will start testing it for, for that reason, but you have to, of course, uh, dig much deeper. And, and it, for instance, us, uh, AI that we develop, it's not like any so clever, best, world-class AI. I mean, it, it, it maybe it is, but in the narrow niche that it does, it solves a, a simple problem, right? So it gives you an opportunity to find much more about your crop and your field than you were able before, right? And people need that. They need it in, in, in agriculture. So that's it. Just find find exactly what you can solve better than, than without it. Thank you, Milan. And Marco, what is your advice for everyone who is uh, going to take this journey? Uh, well, I'll, I'll assume uh, we are talking about uh, mostly data scientists. So my usual, uh, uh, usual advice is to uh, don't think about that. Like, that's, that's not the way uh, you're solving any problems. Okay, so uh, the best thing is to start with something simple. Simple solutions often work very well. Uh, and then figure out, you know, how much time, money, whatever resources you need to spend to make something which is some, you know, amazing uh, machine learning solution or whatnot. whatnot. Um, and and what's your uh, you know what's your added benefit for that? Uh, because very often you know businesses want something that's robust, even though it's 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 not the best thing. So uh, no one's well, mostly no one's you know starting off to build the best thing ever when they start doing it. So this approach works really well in, in the industry uh, when, when you're starting on, on something new. Uh, so, you know, for most cases, it works well. And then the second, second uh, thing is uh, people should know it's AI. So it should be, you know, part of some experience which provides some value and people shouldn't know anything about it. So there's, there's like AI some some you know neural networks uh, in in uh, software that processes images on on phones like no one knows about that you know it just makes image look good but uh, no one's selling you AI they're selling you uh, cool filters you know 
and people will buy that and they will not buy AI for, for photos. So it's, it, it, it's something to think about. Though, uh, if you are pitching an idea to investor, make sure to call it an AI. Yes, yes, but then, yeah, yeah they, they will buy that, yes. <laughs> okay, uh, we are safe now. Our jobs are not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. I think you're as well. Uh, thank you so much for uh, this conversation. And if uh, anyone have any questions, please be free to ask our speakers. We have a lot of questions. Uh, hello. I have a question for you. So uh, there are a lot of art no, for all of you. Uh, there are a lot of artificial intelligence in our life nowadays, and um, who uh, is responsible if artificial intelligence can harm people's life or something like this will happen? We know we have self-driving cars and voice assistants like uh, Alisa, Siri, or Alexa, and if they will do something and person will die who will be responsible for this now, and what do you think will happen in future with this responsibility? Again, uh, yeah, uh, I think, thank you for the question, but um, I think it, it, it comes back to the question, you know, if, if a producer produces a gun and then you kill someone who is responsible, right? Is it someone uh, who produced the gun or someone who misused it? So. Uh, from the legal side, I really don't know, right? right for, but um, from the ethical side, I would say that uh, it's hard to believe that any company uh, who, who, uh, who produces something like a product that they will make billions out of it will do it in a way that uh, they will take the blame. Yeah, yeah, you know what? Uh, my car hit someone, so yeah, we're going to take the blame, right? So that's not going to happen, unfortunately. Uh, but I'm not even sure if that, I don't know, the, at which level it should happen that way. So that's, that's hard to answer, but I, I think the, the problem uh, of misusing anything uh, is, again, no different from uh, AI. And I'm not speaking about trolley problem, right, and uh, when the AI will uh, make any decision, uh, how ethical that can be, because people are making also a lot of decisions. Uh, uh, I mean, if, if you give a trolley problem to this for a, people, for a guy, to a person to decide, right, it's same. You're going to have dilemma, and if uh, he decides in a way that he's he going to be responsible or not. So I think it's not much different. So this is, this, this, these things uh, happen uh, constantly, whether it's uh, AI or human making these decisions, so there are always a gray zone where, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a gray zone. Okay, thank you, but um, um, to, to make sure I got you right. For example, if I am buying a self-driving car, and this car will hit the human, and this human will probably die. With the car, I buy responsibility for this car. Do you mean this? Uh, sorry, I don't have a yes or no answer to that yet. Really, I would probably have to study it or see what, or study legal studies, you know, for five years to answer the question. So I don't have an answer. I just, you know, it was maybe a rhetorical answer from my side. Sorry for that. OK, thank you. Yeah, hi guys, thank you for the discussion. And I have a question to Marco. Uh, what's your personal opinion about the thing that uh, game dev has tremendously more money than, for example, medicine or science? And how do you deal with it? Uh, a game dev has more money than, sorry, what? Ah, okay, so someone, someone saving human life, uh, right. So, I don't know, uh, there's like, uh, there's, there's many, uh, there are people who are like atrocious and they have huge, huge, uh, you know, uh, media space, have a lot of money, that's, that's also an issue, uh, can be, but I think that that's the issue of how how the economy works, and uh, you know, uh, really, money is not everything. 
it's like just the point is that whatever is uh, related to technology and and uh, this this sphere of work uh, it can scale well you know so if we can make one doctor uh, able to to scale to thousands of patients to help them at once they would make a lot of money so it's a scaling problem problem um, uh, and and because of that you know there's a difference in 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 money but you know that's just like that <laughs> you kind of have to live with that <laughs> so that's that's it Thank you very much for the questions, and uh, you can ask our speakers uh, on the after party and enjoy the end of the conference. Thank you very much.